corporations are on the move. Chevron is planning to sell its headquarters in San Ramon, California. Tesla is relocating its headquarters from California to Texas. Companies are rapidly moving people and operations to Florida, including Elliott Management, Blackstone, Citadel, Goldman Sachs. Many states are offering companies enticing incentives like lower taxes if they bring their jobs to new homes. Companies are choosing Texas because it has the superior business climate. But a superior business climate doesn't always equate to a superior working climate. Things that benefit employers when it comes to their bottom line or their margin, they can directly conflict with things that benefit actual employees. Some of the states with the most attractive business incentives have been passing controversial social policies such as LGBTQ restrictions, limiting voting access, and preventing schools and employers from holding diversity and inclusion trainings. These policies do affect whether people are deciding to, you know, relocate and where they're going to locate. People also take other factors into consideration when deciding where to work. It was cost of living, weather, culture, and fourth, of course, where we could get a job. With the Northwest and Seattle, and I guess the West Coast in general, like the cost of living has gone up so, so exponentially. We're still in a very tight labor market where <laughs> workers still have a lot of power and the ability to be picky. So which states are the worst for workers? And how can companies in those states attract top talent? The Best States to Work Index was a project that we created in 2017 as a way to understand what states were stepping into the vacancy left by the federal government when it came to support for workers and working families. The Best States to Work Index thinks about three big themes for how workers and working families are supported, wages, worker protections, and rights to organize. The worst states to work are in the South, almost always. And in 2021, the worst state to work was North Carolina. The second to worst state was Georgia. And then in order, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina. North Carolina ranked first on CNBC's 2022 Top States for Business Index for its strong overall economy, large access to capital, and a solid housing market. But North Carolina scored in the bottom half of CNBC's rankings for life, health, and inclusion for its lack of discrimination protections and low per capita public health spending. Just as when you look at company offerings and look at the benefits, you need to also really look at states and think of what do you prioritize? What are you willing to, unfortunately, willing to sacrifice in order to get the best protections for what you need? Lauren Perrine had moved from Pittsburgh to Boston for a job in 2019, but she quickly realized Boston wasn't a good fit for her. It was pretty early on, too. I think it was like one or two months in, I went to my manager and said, hey, like, just so you know, I'm not going to want to be here in a year or two. And so it was kind of talking with them early on about transferring maybe to another city, such as Atlanta, which is where I originally wanted to go. Oxfam America ranked Georgia as one of the worst states for worker protections, but Perrine valued community and mentorship she found in Atlanta over the liberal legal protections in Boston. I wanted to move somewhere where I saw people that looked like me, people that were in the spaces I was in. They were also in tech that we had similar interests in. So far, I would say with Atlanta, it's been really easy to get plugged in here and just meet people and, and make friends. A partisan divide has formed on labor policies. State-level Democrats are more likely to pass the sorts of policies Oxfam America is tracking. One really good example of that would be the state of Virginia, which in 2019 was dead last in our index, went from dead last to 23rd. And the reason for that is because there was new representation in Virginia, and there was a lot of new policies that were passed in Virginia that really helped workers and working families. There was a heightened minimum wage, protections for domestic workers. There was expanded protection of unionization for teachers. So when policies change, it really, really affects the index ranking. And the private sector paid attention. In 2019, Amazon engaged in a high profile search for the best location to build its second headquarters. They got hundreds and hundreds of applications from all of these different cities and states that were throwing 
enormous tax breaks at them. And at the end of the day, it seems like the driver of their decision wasn't who could offer them the largest tax break, but instead, what does the talent ecosystem in that community look like? And a huge factor that they cited when they chose Virginia was that this is a state that has a very good higher education system. It had made a large commitment to creating a sustainable tech talent pipeline to fill the jobs that Amazon was going to need. We have a robust workforce that includes one of the strongest pools of tech talent in the nation. And so companies need to find communities that actually are investing in their people that are going to be the human capital that fuels their growth and productivity. There's a lot to really think about. Everyone has their own preferences. Everyone has their concoctions of what they need. The states with good worker protection laws may also have downsides for working people. High costs of living. Oxfam America ranked Oregon, New York, Massachusetts, and California as some of the best states for workers' rights. But CNBC's 2022 Top States for Business Index ranked those states as some of the worst when it comes to costs of living. If you look at where we were living in Boston, it was like a 300 square foot shoebox of an apartment across from uh, Fenway Stadium for about $1,800 a month. Dusty Darnold is originally from the Chicago area, but he's bounced between Seattle, Los Angeles, and Illinois since graduating from college in 2007. The cost of living in Seattle and just the West Coast in general has gone up so significantly. It just made sense from a financial standpoint and, you know, taking into consideration a family perspective just to be here in Illinois. Feeling comfortable in an area also plays a big role. To me, I am Black first and just the ability to have like culture and community and the safety in that. A lot of these laws really aren't gonna help me. A lot of the people that I work with are in chocolate cities. <laughs> the biggest factor can be, do they feel like they can belong? So it may be Atlanta, but it may not be a lot of places in Georgia. It may specifically be New York City. It may be specifically Dallas or Houston when it comes to Texas or even Washington, D.C. Um, so it's not necessarily about the full state. It's common for companies to flee high-tax states for states that are considered more business-friendly, such as Texas, Florida, Georgia, Arizona, and North Carolina. But the states that offer these incentives are also more likely to pass contentious laws on social issues, as well as have the weakest worker protection laws. One high-profile example of these social policies is abortion. About eight in 10 of top talent did not want Roe v. Wade overturned. These are adults, 18 to 64 years old, who have a college degree, who are in the workforce or actively looking for a job. More than a dozen states have either severely restricted or outright banned abortion after the Supreme Court overruled Roe v. Wade. Corporate America felt a need to address it. Many companies are also coming out in support of workers by now offering to pay for abortion travel expenses, including memos to employees from J.P. Morgan and Disney, assuring they will pay for those costs. The public statements of support suggest that companies may be concerned about attracting top talent. The CEO of Duolingo tweeted, if Pennsylvania makes abortion illegal, we won't be able to attract talent and we'll have to grow our offices elsewhere. There may be something to that concern. 63% of potential top talent surveyed said it would discourage them from relocating to a state where politicians banned abortion. If a work opportunity took us to a state that did not have access to those types of rights, we would very strongly consider not moving there because, you know, we have a, a daughter who we feel should be able to make decisions regarding her own body. There are a number of things that workers are looking for um, when they think about considering different employment opportunities and that companies have to consider when they're recruiting talent for jobs, um, where I'm going to be free from discrimination, a culture where I feel valued and have the ability to have purpose and feel like I'm, I'm contributing to the organization. But companies making statements about abortion access may be about more than reassuring employees. I think that companies are more so interested in the consumer opinion than actually enacting um, change. What we saw in 2020 was a lot of companies putting black squares on their social media and a lot of companies promising to invest into black talent. That same energy is not shared two years later. The reality is most Americans aren't actually moving. 
geographic mobility decline during the onset of the pandemic, if your social structure and community are embedded in one place and have been for a long time, you're actually pretty unlikely to move. And the long run trends in the United States is actually that geographic mobility has been declining, that fewer people have been moving across state lines. The last five years or so have really taught me the privilege that I have. Not everybody has that same accessibility to be able to just you know, bounce wherever they want to go move to. Remote work may be an option for some companies, so their headquarters can remain in low-tax states while employees can live wherever they please. But that's not the case for all workers. The population of workers that can work remotely is highly skewed towards higher educated, higher wage jobs. And for a lot of people in this country, even though they would like to have that flexibility, they're in roles, whether it be in manufacturing or in hospitality or in retail, where remote work hasn't been an option. A lot of these corporations that do need to attract the top talent tend to have headquarters in places that are very appealing and tend to have, if this applies to them, warehouses in places that are significantly less appealing and perhaps have more lenient policies when it comes to paid leave or lower wages or do not enshrine the right to organize. States passing these social policies, such as restricting abortion, may hurt employers and the economy in the long run. Majority of adults um, in the country want abortion legal in all or most cases, didn't want row overturns. For most people, abortion is not about a procedure. It's about who has power and control over your body and about these decisions. And I think voters see it very much as a proxy for a bunch of other things. Limiting abortion access can have negative impacts on women's career advancement and in some cases cause them to leave the workforce entirely. This can also have significant consequences for the overall economy. The growth of the U.S. economy has actually really been dependent enormously on increasing rights of women entering the workforce. Declining labor force participation of women is really bad news for the U.S. economy. We need women in the workforce to drive growth and drive productivity. Companies recognize the importance of a diverse workforce. Better diversity is better products, period, right? Um, you're able to understand the different perspectives. You're able to understand the blind spots. You're able to reach different audiences. A lot of what we see in America was not built for the economic benefit of people of color or uplifting of women. These were systems that were built to benefit white men. As human rights has evolved, we need to really revisit the systems that were actually created to exclude people. 